When setting out to make our demo, we wanted to push the boundaries of what's possible with UE5 today, while targeting next-gen hardware specifications. Here are sequences running in real-time on PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. Okay, welcome to the brand new UI in Unreal Engine 5. While a lot of the same features and functionality that you've come to know in UE4 are still present in the new UI, we've added several new systems that put you at the center of the experience. For example, the content browser can now be accessed like a drawer using hotkeys, allowing you to keep a clean workspace while still having access to all the content that you need. We can also collapse and restore editor tabs to and from the sidebar, maximizing the viewport experience. And you're gonna see a lot more of the UI as we get further into this presentation, but we can't wait for you to get your hands on it. Now, one of the main features of Unreal Engine 5 is Nanite, our virtualized micropolygon geometry system that frees artists to create as much geometric detail as the eye can see. Virtualized geometry supports orders of magnitude more triangles without compromising speed and replaces the traditional system of mesh LODs, handling all detail transitions seamlessly without any additional setup. In other words, Nanite lets the artist create while the engine does the work. Switching to this Nanite visualization, you can see individual triangles rendered out as different colors here in the viewport. And because the geometry is now virtualized, you can feel free to place assets like these all throughout your scene to fill out a massive player space. Using this debug view, you can see individual instances represented by different colors from swatch to swatch. Each instance in this environment contains around one to two million triangles, providing enough detail for the camera to roam with complete creative freedom. Now, UE5's new anti-aliasing solution, Temporal Super Resolution, keeps up with all this new geometric detail to create sharper, more stable images than before, with quality approaching true native 4K at the cost of 1080p. While highly detailed assets are great on their own, high quality lighting that realistically reacts to your scene is what opens the door to more dynamic worlds and immersive gameplay. Lumen is our fully dynamic, real-time global illumination solution that immediately reacts to scene and light change, making for more believable experiences. And the GI hooks in directly with our time of day settings, allowing for true physically-based setups for photorealistic environments. The Megascans library has meticulously calibrated physically-based services and objects in the thousands of assets as of today. And the assets that we're highlighting here show just how powerful it is to have Nanite and Lumen working in tandem. Also, thanks to the new Sky Atmosphere system, it is incredibly simple to quickly simulate realistic time of day, carefully art direct volumetric clouds, and make modifications to things like atmospherics, sun position, and fog. And for this example, we wanted a fully dynamic scene, no light baking, and realistic interpolation between the different times of day. Of course, when in development, having access to high quality content that's easy to use helps you iterate quickly and saves lots of time that can be better spent elsewhere on your project. With Quixel now being a part of the Epic Games family, we've made the full Megascans library free and open for all Unreal Engine users. Bridge, our online browser for Megascans assets, has historically functioned as a standalone application for quickly exporting assets in bulk directly into the engine, albeit separate from Unreal. Today, we're happy to announce that Bridge is now natively integrated directly into the engine UI. Now you can simply drag and drop assets directly into your scene for a more intuitive and connected experience. And simply logging in with your Epic ID gives you immediate access to thousands of assets to use for free in your Unreal Engine projects. We are constantly looking to enhance the value of the Megascans library. And today we're excited to announce that we're adding a brand new asset type called Mega Assemblies. Mega Assemblies are the natural next step for us in removing even more barriers for artists in crafting their worlds. By combining existing assets from the Megascans library, our artists are pre-assembling elements that can be quickly accessed and leveraged to populate your scenes. Using the Moab set, let's add an assembly to our scene. And just like that, we were able to quickly change the composition of this area in our map. With UE5, we are reimagining what collaboration looks like for teams and projects of all sizes. A common challenge when collaborating on large worlds is deciding how to structure map content so that everyone on the team can easily work without asset contention, while also avoiding painful merge conflicts. A new system called World Partition makes traditional world building workflows obsolete by changing the way that we think about map files. Rather than requiring artists to build out map content as a series of streaming levels, 
World Partition allows teams to think of a single map as one large world that gets broken down automatically into many smaller, streamable cells on a grid. These cells can be selectively loaded or unloaded in the editor to save on edit time resources, allowing artists to only load up the sections of the map that they need. On top of that, changes to actors in a World Partition map are tracked at the actor level, not at the map level. This one file per actor approach empowers different team members to work on different actors in the same map without having to worry about their changes getting clobbered in a merge or having to revert to get someone else's edits. Now, this approach means you could have artists lighting, set dressing, and reworking the landscape simultaneously, all within the same virtual space. Managing this much content at runtime typically requires a ton of thought about how to stream relevant content in and out to stay inside performance budgets. Fortunately, World Partition handles that as well. At runtime, only the cells in a user-defined radius from our player are loaded, and as we move, new cells are streamed in while cells no longer needed are replaced by their lower resolution, hierarchical level of detail, or HLOD version. And since all projects have different requirements, the cell size and loading radius are fully configurable to match each project's content streaming needs. Another feature that comes along with World Partition is data layers. Data layers are a way to categorize map assets and collectively enable or disable them when you want to alter the state of the world. Working in data layers, a separate group of artists was able to assemble a mythical reimagination of the environment with more interactive elements for our demo. At runtime, we can swap between these two modes, streaming thousands of actors in and out, and enter into the dark world. Let's see this in action as we go back to Chant. Thanks, Galen. Many runtime and interactive frameworks in Unreal Engine are getting significant updates in UE5. One thing we've added for animation is an experimental new full-body IK solver, which is designed to give you better results with less work. Here, you can see it in action as the rig for our player character, Echo, corrects itself to adjust for variations on the ground below her. It's deterministic, reliable, and around 10 times faster than before. To build and maintain more scalable gameplay systems, we've also added a new framework called Game Feature Plugins that will allow you to build and ship game content in a more modular way. With Game Feature Plugins, numerous core gameplay features can be built in parallel with better encapsulation and finer content organization. Game feature plugins allow developers to add activation instructions to extend base game functionality, register new input actions for players, and interface with other frameworks such as animation. When we shifted into the dark world, we also activated a new game feature to give Echo a brand new attack ability. All of the assets and logic needed for the ability, including new animations, input controls, blueprint code, VFX, and audio, are contained inside this plugin and core game classes have no idea that these assets exist until we activate it. We've also added a feature called Animation Motion Warping, which allows you to manipulate root motion animations to adapt them to the world. Echo's vault animation was authored to the specific dimensions of this rubble. Leveraging motion warping, we were able to add notify states in the vault animation asset that can react to transform data passed in via blueprints. This allowed us to reuse the same animation to vault over other assets of different dimensions, like these pieces of debris, by sending information about their size into the motion warping system. Before triggering the vaulting animation, a blueprint script determines her rotation, how high up she jumps, how far she needs to move to get to the other side, and where her feet should land. Motion warping then adapts the root motion of the vault animation to match this data. Also, for the rift interact animation, we used motion warping to place Echo in the perfect position in order to ensure her hand would always touch the rift. So on the topic of animation, Unreal Engine 5 also includes our in-editor rigging tool, Control Rig. Meet the Ancient, a film quality creature imagined and built by our friends at the Aaron Sims Creative Company. We partnered with Aaron Sims and his group of talented artists to concept the dark world and to bring it to life through an enormous mythical adversary. 
Now, every single animation for the Ancient was authored wholly in Engine by the Aaron Sims creative team using Control Rig and Sequencer, our linear cinematic animation tool. Also, just to push the boundaries a bit, they even built it out of a collection of nanite meshes totaling over 50 million triangles attached directly to the skeleton. Control Rig was designed to keep artists close to their creations without having to bounce back and forth between software packages, allowing them to quickly iterate, all inside Unreal. While imagining the battle between Echo and the Ancient, we wanted to give the creature a heavy laser attack that Echo would have to avoid. We needed it to track Echo's location in the arena and fire a slow, sweeping blast towards her. Taking advantage of the full-body IK solver mentioned earlier, we were able to influence the direction and distance the Ancient reaches out during the firing animation, based on where Echo is in the scene. Let's see the results. Here is what the base firing animation looks like. And here it is again, with the full body IK post process layers enabled, and our info about Echo passed into Control Rig. With full body IK and Control Rig, designers and artists can now author fully dynamic animations that react to gameplay without having to build complex animation state machines composed of numerous animation assets. In Unreal Engine 5, we've completely overhauled the audio engine, centered around meta sounds, a new asset type used for every sound effect in our demo. Meta sounds bring the power and flexibility found in material editors to audio creation, providing fine control for authoring procedural game audio. With full audio synthesis capabilities and a rich audio function library, Meta sounds give unprecedented control over sound effects and runtime applications. Using Meta sounds, we built the Ancient's laser attack out of a combination of sound samples and synthesized audio. Let's briefly break down how it was set up. Using the stereo mixer, let's isolate and play just the synthesized charge sound. This effect is made by using a handful of sound wave generators and multiple modulation widgets. Now, let's mix back in our sound samples to hear the final result again. Alright, let's take down the Ancient. 